what's going on. Seventeen minutes late. That's what I am. Just trying to get here on time, trying to prep for the live. Then I slept in a little bit, to be honest. It's one of those kind of days. It's calm, relaxing. It's cold. It's definitely really cold in Arizona. That's what you guys are missing. I'm sure it's cold by you guys as well, too. But it's definitely cold over here. Especially when you get used to hot weather and it's 41 degrees outside. It's pretty cold. Howdy, howdy. Let everybody hop in here. Welcome, welcome. And if you guys have any questions about anything, you can throw those questions in. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. You're a Sagittarius. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And uh, happy you got to come here on your birthday. And hope you're enjoying your birthday as well, too. And I hope that this year brings you lots of great things. Prosperity, great health, and just great knowledge, right? Because each year I feel that we learn more and more. It's kind of, I think... It's kind of it's kind of feels like that's why we've been so disconnected from our elders or those who are older than us because of the fact of the knowledge that they possess with each year that they you know each each year that you get older you get more and more knowledge so happy birthday and welcome to the Instagram live for today it's Chicago weather in Arizona yeah, it is true actually it is kind of like that it is <laughs> it is kind of like that. That's what we have going on right now. It's it's crazy. There's all these interesting clouds. And uh, there could be snow in Scottsdale, which would be absolutely crazy. Because also there's no infrastructure here for snow, right? We don't have any salt trucks. We don't have, we don't have anything. So if it does freeze or anything else, they might shut down the city because it will be too cold, which would be pretty crazy to see Scottsdale get snow and whatever else. But they're always manipulating things, making weather changes, and doing all kinds of weird stuff. Bill Ruhlman, what's going on, my brother? It's a long time, long time. I'm happy it even shows you that I'm live because for the most part, there's not many people in here because Instagram censors our account all the time. So thankful you are here also. Do you ship to Europe? Yes, we ship all of our products to Europe. You can go to our website, cultivateelevate.com. And you can order right on there. And we ship to Europe all the time. We send a lot of stuff over to Europe. And um, basically, if you want to try something to be a great beginner package, that would be our Shilajot Tablets, Six Mix, Pearl Powder, or Dragon's Blood. Those are pretty much our top sellers. So they pretty much go like crazy. So those would be the top ones. And all of those will help bring in nutrients to your body that the body is missing because that's what we are, nutrient deficient. And when we have nutrient deficiencies, then our body starts to fall apart. When we bring back in those nutrients, our body starts to pick up and feel good again. Any Christmas sales? At the moment, we don't have any sales going on because we just had our largest sale of the year and it was pretty crazy. We, are, we had our Black Friday sale and I'm very thankful for all the support. Everybody who got to see um, you know, I got to got a chance to support us for the holiday because it was nuts. It was the craziest. This is the craziest year we've had, and I'm thankful for all the support the last three years. The business just keeps going, and people keep supporting, no matter all the censorship and all the nonsense and everything else. And also, it says I keep getting blocked from sound as well, and keep having to re-sign in. And yes, Instagram. Anytime I go live, <laughs> I've realized they kick people out. The thing will freeze. The thing will be blocked. And I'm doing a live tomorrow with a guy named Eric who re shared all my stuff on water. But that's how this platform is. You know, this platform really limits the ability to be social as it once did. It used to be all about being social, but now this platform just picks and chooses when it wants to be social. Shows new year live every week, bro. I'm happy to hear. Real clouds for a change. It is something like that. Yes, it looks like real clouds. They look somewhat... Somewhat real. It's interesting because, you know, they, the, the airplanes will come out. They'll do all their stuff. And yesterday it was sunny. I went hiking with a friend. We went up to the top of the mountains, found some quartz, did a whole adventure up to the top of the mountains. And it was like 68, and today it's about 48. So night and day change. And that's, I feel like, part of the whole weather thing that's going on with California, Utah, and this big storm or whatever. But today we're going to hit in some topics. I'm going to talk about a book. 
that I was reading that I think every person should look into, and it's called Health and Light by Dr. John Ott, and it talks about the benefits of light. And this book is very, very fascinating because with all of this going on, it's so important to be outside, right? That's the number one thing I've realized. When it comes to all of the technology, every single thing that we face, all of the nonsense, we have to be outside and be present in the sun because the sun is very healing. And it's interesting because in this book, they talk all about light, they talk about light spectrums, they talk about food and light, they talk about plants and light. And it's fascinating because it's something we don't pay attention to, right? We don't pay attention to light spectrum. So for example, if you bring in LED lights into your home, you're bringing in a digital light that has no long-term studies, and we are, for example, the long-term study. And also, it has different types of light spectrums with different types of waves that impact our health, right? It impacts our eyes, impacts our brain, impacts our heart, right? Because everything is a frequency. So when we see fake light, right? Because that's what LED lights are, they're fake lights. When we see these fake lights, they start to impact our health in a negative way. And this book basically goes heavy into about fluorescent bulbs. And it was really, really fascinating. He was showing schools, and this is nuts, he was showing schools that had fluorescent bulbs had more hyperactive children who couldn't pay attention than schools that had incandescent bulbs. And what they started to notice was they did a lot of experiments where they took a bunch of children and they took out the fluorescent bulbs and put incandescent bulbs into the school and they started to notice that the kids could pay attention and function a lot better. This also happened too in special education programs as well too, where a lot of the children, basically what was happening was, was the lights, the impact of the frequency was impacting their brain so that they would basically do things that they normally weren't doing. They'd bang their head on the table, they'd jump up and down, they'd be rowdy, everything else. When they switched out the bulbs, the kids started changing and actually paying attention for the first time since the whole entire time being in the, basically in the classroom. So lights play a big factor. And what happens is, is when we're bombarded with these unhealthy lights, such as fluorescent bulbs and LED bulbs, our body starts to crave light, right? That's why there's this huge, we're gonna go into the infrareds and all the things that they talk about everything else, but this is this huge industry, right? People are craving ultraviolet lights, such as like a black light. But what happens is, is because we're in these fake light environments, our body starts to get bombarded with fake lights. And what happens is, is our health starts to deteriorate. So we need to be out in the sun, we need to be out in nature, but we also need to not have any type of LEDs or fluorescent bulbs in the home, right? We want incandescent bulbs because they have the natural, if you look at the spectrums of these bulbs, they have the most natural to the sun, right? They almost mimic kind of like the sun. They go up and then they go down and everything else. And that's the thing. When we have these fake lights, then we can't function properly. So it was interesting because he was showing these students, he showed plants that were having problems, which, you know, it's interesting because you have a lot of people who are growing things. And if you're growing things with fake lights, your plants are also affected as well too. You know, so sunlight is best. And it's interesting because he studied all of this and realized that people should be paying attention to these things. And he tried to bring awareness to this. And it was wild because he saw that people who had illness, this was crazy, people who had illness, basically all they had to do was go out in the sunlight and their illness would go away. They had a terminal illness, such as some terminal disease. There was one lady in this book who they talked about who she had a terminal illness and they put her out in the backyard, basically, for like six hours a day and she just sat and read her book and whatever else. Within two months, her terminal illness was gone and the, and the professional at the time couldn't even understand it because basically she was coped up in an office. She was in an artificial setting, which was altering her health and destroying it. And when she went back out into nature, nature just healed her with the sunlight. That was it. She thought it was from reading her book, but in reality it was from the sunlight. And they did this with other people too. They went out in the sun, they stopped being in fake lights and all of a sudden they were fixed. Now it's very fascinating because What's the biggest thing that we think of when your eyes are starting to go bad, right? What happens? They sell you glasses or they sell you contacts. That's the book, Curtis, Curtis, you know. But anyways, they sell you glasses or they sell you contacts. And those two things block the UV spectrum from coming in the eyes so the eyes start to deteriorate or start to fall apart. So think about this. 
You go to the eye doctor. The doctor tells you, oh, your, abs, your eyes are getting worse. We need to give you glasses. Well, when you start to wear those glasses for long periods of time, you cannot allow the UV spectrum into your eyes for your eyes to get better. So they start to fall apart. And then you need stronger and stronger glasses and then stronger and stronger contacts. And so what he noticed was, was people who were wearing these glasses all the time, their eyes started falling apart. Same thing with sunglasses, right? When you're going out into the sun and you wear sunglasses, you're not allowing the sun to hit the penile gland or the third eye or to be absorbed into the brain. The sunglasses are blocking that spectrum so that you don't get the healing frequencies. So what he started to notice was is that the whole reason people don't heal is because they're not exposed to ultraviolet light. Now this is fascinating because every study you will read will talk about how ultraviolet light is the most dangerous, but if you look at the populations up on top of mountains who are exposed to the highest amount of ultraviolet light, they have the lowest disease rates, they have the best eyesight, and they have the best health. So that counteracts every single thing in which is being published and put onto the, me the, the medical you know, journals and whatever else. Also on top of that, when, when John Ott showed this in the book as well too, right? He showed these things to the medical system. They laughed at him because they said, light? We don't, we, we don't even study light. He said that was crazy because the fact that when you go to consume certain things, if they are not in a certain type of light or your body is not absorbing certain types of light, you can't absorb it. So think about that. You have, for example, you go to consume something and then you're not out in the sun. Your body cannot recognize it and the pathways will not absorb it, uh, open up so that you can absorb it. So it's very, very fascinating. And this, this book, I mean, honestly, is probably one of the best books I've read. I can, I can attest to that with The Invisible Rainbow, Dr. Cowan's work. I mean, one of the best books out there, and it just really goes into light and understanding how we've been programmed to be in the dark, right? And then under artificial lights and fake lights and all these things, and then our eyes get worse and worse. And then we're also on screens, which also mimic a blue, blue light, which is a digital light that also causes issues too, because it's a different type of spectrum. These spectrums can be fixed when you start to introduce full spectrum lights into your home or incandescent bulbs as well too that are like a cool white or whatever else but there's so many different things and it's like we don't study any of this stuff and it was fascinating to watch he went through all these things and i got my notes over here but he went through all these things and it was crazy to see that he could heal all these people just like that with light that was it that's all they needed was sunlight and think of how much money they spend blocking it out right they got to block it out and you know keep us in the dark and everything else there's a reason for that too, because it makes people crazy. He also learned that people who were exposed to little amounts of sunlights also became alcoholics. So think about that. Think about a place that does not have a lot of sun. The most alcohol is consumed in that area. The most drugs are consumed in that area because they are not exposed to sunlight. He also took prisoners and put them out into the sun and they stopped doing all the stuff that they were doing because they were just exposed to the sun. That's how powerful the sun is for us in these healing frequencies. And that's why everything on Google, everything on Google, where it says the sun is dangerous, the sun is going to burn you, the sun is going to do this, the sun is going to do that. If you go and sit out outside in the sun and you get burned or whatever else, or you get cooked or whatever it may be, you feel great afterwards because the sun has soaked into your body. Now, if you sit out in the sun too much, your skin will start to block it. But the thing is, is it's very beneficial and very healing. So this book, I mean, it's crazy. And I'll talk more about it in a second because somebody else was just saying something. Name of the book, it's called Health and Light by Dr. John Ah. Let me see if I can just put that up there. So that's it. Just looked up incandescent bulbs and said, Biden will ban the selling of these bulbs by February 2023. Yes, yes, that's it. I put up a video about that a couple months ago. Our administration is caring about our health and the planet. That's what they tell us by banning incandescent bulbs so that we can have LED bulbs which are linked to cataracts in all of our homes. That's basically that's what that is. So yes, if you do need to find some bulbs, look online. There's some online websites where you can get incandescent bulbs. If you can't find incandescent bulbs by you, you can also find halogen bulbs. Those would be the two best. You can also look into kerosene lamps, which are really cool. That's the old fashioned way of doing things. Or you can do some candles as well too. 
right? And the thing is, is you really have to understand the damage that can occur from light over just a short amount of time, okay? So this is really simple. Basically what he studied and understood was when you're exposed to light, your muscles become weak, right? Certain types of light will actually impact your muscles. And this was really cool. He did these fascinating tests. He basically did muscle tests where basically you take your arm like that and you basically would ask, you, like for example, you know, you, you, put it, you put yourself in a scenario, for example, like under a fluorescent bulb or a LED bulb and you push your arm down and you see if your arm can be pushed down. Right now there's no fake lights in here, but my arms cannot be pushed down because I, I have nothing fake around me. But what John Ott noticed was when people were put into three scenarios, three scenarios, one was wearing a digital watch, their muscle strength test, they instantly failed. He could push their arm down right away and it would collapse. Smart watch, right? Apple watch, all these watches, watches and devices and things like that instantaneously push them down. Next one he talked about was when a person was put in front of a fluorescent bulb, they instantaneously became weaker on their muscles. Think of the gym, right? The gym has fake lights now. All gyms have fake lights. They don't even have windows in half of them. They go to do a muscle test, instantly push them down, instantly becoming weaker, right? That's the next one. Next thing he talked about when any person is exposed to radio frequencies, which would be EMF, their muscle test instantly down, right? And then last but not least, which I thought was fascinating when I'm reading this book, because it's a lot of stuff I've already told you guys and whatever else, but polyester clothes. When a person is wearing polyester, they become weaker, their muscles become weaker, their body becomes more fatigued, and he did a muscle test and instantaneously he can push their hands down. So think about this. You have digital devices, you have polyester clothes, and you have fake lights, and you create a weak society without even doing anything to the society. The environment or terrain instantaneously weakens the society, right? Now, what happens is when you revert all that and you use natural fibers, natural clothes, you get rid of the technology, the nonsense and whatever else, and you put real lights in your home, now you're stronger. That's pretty much what it is. That's why they spend so much money. That's why they're putting all these goofy lights up on the street, goofy lights up in the car, goofy lights up in the stores. And what's more crazy is one of the documentaries I was watching was talking about how these LED bulbs that they're putting out on the streets have a special pattern in them where they can make people sick so that they can't look at them. They actually have a pattern where they can send a frequency of light, light, right? Send a frequency of light to make you sick and make your stomach nauseous, nauseous and make your body not be able to function so that you don't look up at them. So think about that. So now we're going on a whole other spectrum of light that you can't even see, that they're using light against the people. And that's why the next biggest thing, which is crazy, is Li-Fi, but that's not even in this book. But what he also noticed was, in relation to light as we keep going up as well too, is that food changed depending on the light is in which it was exposed to. And I thought this was really fascinating. So he was talking about, like for example, a gallon of milk, right? When a gallon of milk, and I'm just using that as an example, there's a billion different things in the grocery store, but when a gallon of milk was presented under fluorescent bulbs for up to six minutes, the vitamin A, the vitamin C, and all of the different minerals started to decompose, right? Because of the exposure of the fluorescent bulbs. So think of everything in the grocery store. This is where we go into it. When I talk about how things do not have the minerals, things lose their mineral, their, their contents and everything else. Because when they're exposed to certain light spectrums, they depreciate the nutritional value of the food because of the light, ex the light spectrum that they're exposed to. So it's interesting because now here's where we take it all. Monsanto, okay, Monsanto, the company we all know that produced DDT and all the other poisons that they try to you know, put into our food supply. Monsanto came out with a product called vitamin A it's a vitamin A rice. That's what it was, right? Called golden rice. Now it's interesting. When food is put into the grocery store and it's exposed to fluorescent bulbs or fake lighting, including LED, the first thing that's destroyed is vitamin A. So they knew that if they basically exposed the foods to the lights, that vitamin A would be the first thing to go 
and they would patent that and make that into a food product that they would then resell to the people after they knew that the lights would remove that. What is also Monsanto patenting at this time? Vertical gardens. Vertical indoor gardens, right? Vertical gardens so that you can grow in these cones and all these weird things and then you can put the minerals back in and then you can use the fake lighting which will also depreciate the minerals and then you can just keep going through this perpetual cycle buying their seeds and their pesticides and their chemicals and then one day all your plants fail because that's one thing that also is impacted by light spectrum. When you grow under fake lights, your plants sooner or later will begin to pass away because they will all signal to each other because they are all in sync and they will soon start to signal to each other that basically I'm under a toxic setting and this whole thing is toxic and they will start to pass away. So light spectrum can impact everything. It can impact it so much that it can actually cause certain plants to only create women or I'm sorry, female plants or male plants. Now, here's a real question. When they put out all these new lights, what are you altering, right? There's another old, another rabbit hole. What are you altering? Because what they noticed, Dr. John Ada also noticed with fluorescent bulbs, was if a pink light was present, the plants would basically be all female. Versus if, for example, a blue light was there, a blue light fluorescent, they would be all male. So now the question is, is when you change all the light spectrums out here, you're also changing nature. You're also changing humans. They also did it with animals. Basically, when they had little like farms, they would put certain types of lights to basically get certain animals, either all female or all male. So it's just crazy. That's why I like this book. I mean, when you think of just light and all of these things, it's all something we don't pay attention to. So then after all of this, people are not exposed to enough light, right? And enough UV spectrum, the spectrum that's dangerous, super dangerous. So what happens? You create an infrared, uh, infrared market, right? That promotes incandescent bulbs originally, which was the healing way, now producing LED infrared bulbs. And there's a lot of people sitting and they have these things in front of their face and these masks and all these other things. Guess what? Now you're getting a fake spectrum and you're not really getting what you're needing. And then on top of it, you're also exposing yourself to digital light, which is actually harmful to the body. And it's also not producing any heat. So then it's actually counteracting all the things that you're trying to do. And all of these new infrared products are being used with LEDs and LEDs cannot emit the color red. That's just how it goes. They cannot emit the color red. So they promote, they push and or they don't push and promote. They expose you to a ton of arsenic, right? Arsenic leaks out from the red lights of these LED things that are supposed to be giving you the red light hue. Instead, you just walk out in nature and that beautiful thing, that beautiful sun, that beautiful globe thing, whatever you want to call it, big plasma ball is just going to give you all the spectrum that you need. And that's the thing I've realized. Look at all of these industries. And that's, that's the whole point of this book and why I'm going so into this topic today. All of these industries have been created on just manipulating light, right? You have attention spans change. You have gardening that's been changed. You have food that has been changed. You have mental health that has been changed. All of these things have been created. There's all these different industries that have been created all because they understood if they manipulate the light and give people fake lights and fake types of ways of having things on top of their face and everything else that they can make even more money. And that's even the glasses and the contacts and all of these industries as well. And people used to heal their eyes naturally by looking at the sun. They used to sun gaze and they could heal their eyes based on the sunset and the sunrise and they could heal their eyes. They also did different, different things like this where they would flash over their eyes, right? So it's kind of like you're being exposed, but you're not. That's also part of a meditation frequency to heal your eyes as well. But when we're not understanding these things, then those things are being manipulated and then they take advantage of us. So this whole story is basically going into talking about how lights can change so much. Let me see if I missed anything else. But lights can change so much, it's wild. And, you know, it really made me really think our whole world of everything, you know, and how we're just not really paying attention. And always, I always wondered, you know, why when I'm exposed to LED lights, do I get nauseous? Why do I not feel myself? Why do I get headaches? Why do I get agitated? 
right? Why do you get agitated when you're exposed to LED lights? Because they're not the frequency that the body is supposed to absorb. It's a different wavelength that can cause agitation. And check this out. So he also studied the sodium vapor lights. They're called crime lights, right? These were lights that were placed into all different parts of the city that actually increased crime because when people were exposed to reds, oranges, and yellows, and pinks, they actually started to go nuts. So think about that. They, those old lights that used to be the almost like an orange glow, those were actually called crime lights. They were used to prevent crime, but he actually did studies that found out that it increased crime. That when people are exposed to certain wavelengths, they actually go crazy and will commit more crime. So it's just wild, you know, when you really look at light and all of these spectrums, and then we take it a step further, and what do you have? Copper. What's that giving you? A golden glow. And that's a natural color, natural frequency, natural hues. And what he started to notice was when you create, for example, if you paint in your home or if you are designing or if you're being exposed to colors, you want to be you want to be exposed to natural colors, pastels, and different types of colors that are very natural to the same color as the earth, not the fake ones, because the fake ones can impact your health. So this whole book, I mean, I'm just summing it all up. I think that's, I think that's, I pray that's much of rats and albino gland. Blah blah blah. Oh, the other one, which I thought was really interesting with this book, and that's probably the last one I got with it is the fact that when magnets, now this is funny, when magnets are placed on top of the hand, so you have magnets on top of the hand and you have magnets on the bottom of the hand. When magnets are placed on the top of the hand, the, the body becomes stronger, right? When magnets are placed on this part of the hand, the body becomes weaker. Now, what is this device that I'm using right now? It's a cell phone. These cell phones also contain magnets and guess how you hold your cell phone? Just like that, with the bottom of your hand. So what happens is your body instantaneously becomes weaker just because of that. Versus if the person holds their cell phone on top of their hand, their body actually becomes stronger. So see, when you look at all of these things and all of these devices, all of the stuff, the lights, all of these things, everything is full circle of things we're not paying attention to that impact us on a frequency spectrum that we're just not paying attention to. And that's why when we're exposed to natural light and the sun, we feel our best. And when we're not exposed to natural light, we start to feel our worst and we start to go crazy because we're being exposed to lights, which are basically altering the frequency, altering the mind and pretty much making you go nuts. That's kind of what it is in a nutshell. Bum, bum, bum. Good info. What is the name of the book? Oh yeah, sorry. Health and Light by Dr. John Ah. When I close my eyes and look up at the sun, I only see the red light. I wonder if it's facing the sun, but the your eyes are closed. Is it helpful? Just a thought, no clue about the scientific. When I close my eyes and look at the sun, I only see red light. So with, with, with closing your eyes and looking at the sun, you're still gonna pick up some spec spectrums of frequencies. And that's why back in the day, they used to use quartz glasses, right? Quartz, quartz spectacles, that's what they were called because quartz would still allow the UV to come through, which was actually very healthy. But when closing your eyes, you're still gonna see the reflection of the sun. You're just not gonna get the full spectrum. Now, I'm not saying to go out and just stare out directly at the sun because you don't wanna just directly stare at the sun the entire time because you're gonna mess up your eyes, but you just wanna be exposed to natural sunlight, right? Any sunlight is better than this, the light that's indoors because the problem with windows and also anything closed environment is there's no UVs coming through. This is why windshields also hurt your eyes, right? These, these glass windows hurt your eyes. Anything being inside and exposed to the outsides actually impact the health versus when you're outside, you're just getting all the natural lights all the time from the sun. That's what's very important. So nature always provides you everything that you need. That's pretty much the moral of the story. We inverted everything. We used to live in nature. We used to be connected to nature. We used to barefoot ground. We used to be all a part of this natural cycle. Now we have our own cycles, which our own cycles actually can work against our health because they're not in the same rhythm. For example, it's like having energy in the winter time. This is the time to hibernate, right? This is the time where the sun goes down and it comes up late and this is time for hibernation, time to relax, time to rest, all of those things. And if you're not doing all of that, 
you won't be recovered for the spring and the summer when there's lots of light and your body is exposed to a lot more light. So it's interesting because when you look at the balance of things, that's how things are. They work in seasons for a reason so that we can be prepared as well. But if we alter it, like bringing in, for example, an LED light into the home and then you can't sleep anymore, now all of a sudden your whole rhythmic pattern of trying to rest and relax goes away and the body cannot rest and recover and then it starts to break down faster and starts to fall apart. Nature wins always. It always felt not right to me. That's pretty much it. Red lights, no good. So it's not that red lights are no good. It's just red lights with LEDs would be no good, right? So red light incandescent bulbs, those can be beneficial. But remember, you're only being exposed to it for a short amount of time. That's the other thing that Dr. John Ott noticed, that people are only supposed to be exposed for a couple minutes. You don't have to be exposed for two hours. You know, if you're doing red light therapy for two hours, you're, <laughs> you're actually doing more harm than good. You know, you just need to really be just outside, just in nature. Even if it's a little cloudy, let's say there's some clouds out there and whatever else, you're still getting UV rays and you're still getting the sun. And this is why people take trips or vacations if you live up north, like we used to live in Chicago, for example, and you do not get the UV rays, your body is craving UV rays. So where does everybody go to? Florida and Mexico. That's usually the two because the UV rays are still present there. Same here in Arizona, they, a lot of people come here too, but I'm just giving those as examples. But because the UV rays are still there, when you're not exposed to the UV rays anymore, you go crazy. So it's not that the body needs the red light, right? Like a like a, a bulb that's in the home, it needs real light. Also real oxygen and all of that because of all the stuff from the, the beaches and the waves and the salt and all of that too as well. But just in general, the light is what's the most crucial thing. That's why people start to go crazy when they're in the dark all the time. Disney has a bunch of vertical plants growing on the rides, living with the land. However, I'm not sure about the lighting that they use. Yes, yeah, so it's interesting because this man, Dr. John Ott, worked for Disney and actually made all of the footage for Disney for all of their videos of showing plants opening up and how when plants are exposed to certain lights that they will bloom. So it's all tied, you know, it's interesting because it's all tied together, right? All of these different companies, these different brands, there's a lot of people who used to work for these brands and they've seen the truth, but I would imagine that they have a lot of that. Disney also has the Epcot Center, which was originally supposed to be a very advanced gardening system that was basically going to feed the world, and that never happened because they didn't want to obviously show people they could do that. And I would imagine the lights that they do work with now are probably LEDs because, you know, as they tell us, LEDs are going to save the world, even though LEDs are going to burn out the eyes, cause a lot of mental, uh, mental health issues, and then also pollute everything, right? Because when they break, you have to wear a certain outfit that has a mercury mask and also make sure to turn off your air conditioner and also to do all these 20 other steps before even being exposed to them because of the toxic chemicals that come out of them. But they're going to save the planet, as they tell us, even though that happens. And some of them have cameras in them, right? There's a lot of LED lights with cameras in them. And that's even a whole other rabbit hole of things to find out that a lot of those LED bulbs also have cameras in them. So when you bring LED bulbs into the home, you could be potentially also bringing in cameras or things that sync up to Wi-Fi, which also sync up to cameras into the home as well. That's why I'm very adamant about certain things ever coming into the home because of the fact that you are consenting to bringing these devices into the home. So same thing with Alexa, same thing with Ring Doorbell, same thing with all these different surveillance technologies and whatever else. This can be turned off. This can go sit in a Faraday cage. This can go wherever it needs to be. I don't have to bring this device with me everywhere that I go. I don't have to bring it anywhere, actually. I can just go do whatever I want to do. I don't have to bring anything with me when I travel. But when you install certain devices in the home, such as an Alexa, ring doorbell, all these different things, those things don't turn off and they don't go away. And that's the other thing I see. With a lot of these new frequency devices, and somebody messaged me about this, about different frequency healing devices, they all are synced up to phones, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. And that I don't agree with because that means that you're still being exposed to the frequencies and trying to heal at the same time, which doesn't make much sense. And the thing is, is these people are just trying to take advantage, right? That's all I'm just going to say it straight up. Take advantage of people 
and really just take people's money. I saw a device the other day for frequency healing in the home for $47,000. It's insane, $47,000. Doesn't even make any sense. And it does it because, and in reality, that thing better, I don't know, cook, it better cook, it better carry me around, it better do a whole bunch of stuff for $47,000. And that's the thing is because it's just, it's, they're, they're seeing this market and then pumping out these devices. And same thing with these LED red light masks and same thing, they just pump out things. They don't have to have any type of information or research when they create these things, they just market it. It's always this bait and switch, you know, knew this and knew that, but there's no, people aren't looking in the past, right? That's why I always talk about gold, look in the past because there's so many beautiful people who created so much information and put out so much information and it's all out there. You just have to find it and you just have to connect the dots because then we can spread that information and not all this nonsense that is always trying to be promoted. And it's always, it's promoted and promoted and repeated until it's brainwashed into the mind, right? Because the next generation will grow up saying, what do you mean LED bulbs aren't good for us? Or what do you mean you don't use an LED or you don't use a smartwatch or you don't use AirPods? What are you, are you crazy? That's the conditioning. That's the brainwashing. That's all the stuff that we see. That's the same stuff we see with all the climate stuff as well too. The brainwashing. You keep telling people, oh, the water's running out and everything's going bad. Then they start to believe. But in reality, I could take you right now, right down the street, and I could show you water coming out of the earth. I could show you anything else you want to see because the fact is it's all there. But it's the bait and switch marketing that always gets put out there that impacts us. And then, unfortunately, starts to change our minds and program us. Let me see what else we got in here. Today they replaced the lights of Detroit Tigers baseball field. The old ones are 20 years old and they're replacing them with huge LEDs. So there you go. And the thing is, is with these LEDs, they also connect to the internet of things, right? They have cameras, they have Wi-Fi, they are synced up. That's the whole purpose of all of this, these LED systems is that when they put these lights out on the street, they can watch people. They can see everything that's going on when people are driving, right? They can pay attention to things. That's why they'll also put them in a stadium because a stadium is so much data. You have people eating, you have people drinking, you have people watching, you know how many people are on their phone, you can sync up to their phone, you get all this information that they're trying to get. And it's crazy because when you're under all of those lights, they're also impacting your health. Then people could have a health issue from the lights and we know what systems will make more money again because then people aren't seeing the underlying cause that the lights were actually making people sick, right? Like that, for example, they could have a baseball game and all of a sudden now you got 100, let's say 100 sick people because the lights were messing them all up. Now you get 100 new people to make money on and it just keeps repeating these circles. And also too, with that, those lights, you won't be able to look up at them because they'll make you sick if they're being exposed to. That's why I realize we have to vote with our dollar and make our choices of what we want to attend and also where we want to vote consciously with our money. Because if we support these industries which are working against us, then it just continues. But if we don't support these industries or we decide, I'm just not gonna give them any money anymore, then they're, they're gonna be SOL because they don't have any people to watch. You know, That's pretty much what happens. That's the only way for things to change is people have to boycott or decide, I'm just not gonna partake. I'm gonna go out in nature and I'm gonna take a walk in nature. And if you wanna put up lights in nature or, or cell phone towers or whatever, then people have to boycott those or a protest or get together in a community and say, we don't need this stuff in our community because it's impacting all of our health and we don't want it. And this book was also talking about how teachers did that. Teachers did all of that. They put incandescent bulbs in their schools because they wanted their kids to have the best bulbs. And all the times in which all of the studies were submitted by Dr. John Ott to the professionals, they all said, nobody studies light. The light, we don't, we don't pay attention to light. This is, this is fabricated nonsense. Even though he showed in his studies, in a scientific setting, that the lights would be beneficial to the children. So that's how, would, and he submitted to all of the top medical systems that we all know and they did not want to publish any of his work. They did not want to publish any of his studies. He even tried to work together to make institutes to show all of this, and every time he tried to open up an institute with these people to teach people about lights, they politely declined that they didn't have interest 
in lights. That's because those uh, those companies are also in together with these companies, which are producing the poison to continuously keep it going because they otherwise they don't get their kickbacks. That's what I've realized. That's how all these circles go. And the next thing that will start to happen, which I can totally see, is people creating their own types of bulbs or their own types of lights or utilizing free energy with magnets and copper and all these different things to light up things with their own ways. And that's the other thing that will happen. There can be a revolution of that. And that's what we need. We need to bring back our creative side so we can create new things to heal humanity and also get rid of all this toxic stuff because we don't need it. There's really no need for any of it. And like I said, there's, if, uh, you know, you're ang angry enough, we make change. That's kind of how I see it. Salute to this man providing the knowledge. Always happy to put it out there. They're being installed in more street lights now. Yep, that's the thing. And that's the other one. There's ones with purple and blue light near me. Can't stand it. Yes, the purple, the purple is the part of the pink spectrum, right? So what they did was, was, in this book, he explained about how they took prisoners and they put them in a pink room, all pink, right? So everything pink around them. What happened was is the prisoners became very calm in about 15 minutes. But after 15 minutes, they wanted to rip each other apart. So think about that. So whatever those little pink lights that they're putting are purple, I should say purple weird you know, lights or whatever else, those hit on that same spectrum. So they can probably trigger you to start to make you go crazy. And what happens when you put all those all over the, sh the city? People start getting nuts when they start going for a walk. They're walking down the sidewalk and all of a sudden they don't realize that the lights are affecting them or their head's getting cooked or whatever it may be. Or you take it to a step further where any type of you know surveillance type of thing, they're watching people as well too. Purple lights always made me sick. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's not natural lighting. Let's see what else we got in here. But it's interesting because ultraviolet lights are actually very healing. So that's, it's crazy. But it's just these different spectrums and different wavelengths that are not natural. And that's what they mix, they, 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 they basically mess around with. And it was interesting, someone sent me a thing about how, I think in like Sweden or something, they're coming up with a new light to fight disease. And it's like, that's what fluorescent bulbs were doing as well. <laughs> they were fighting disease with fluorescent bulbs. So it's like, they just keep repeating the same nonsense every 30 years or whatever else and keep bringing it back and then trying to reiterate that it's good for us when in reality it's something toxic because look at it just look at everything right just look at every single thing that they try to give away for free or that they try to give you for free it's usually toxic and what's something they're giving away nowadays for free led bulbs if you contact your energy company and ask for bulbs or even just do the volunteer program they will give you led bulbs for free to help you save energy. They're so they're so nice. You know the energy companies, they're so nice. They have these like hidden little taxes where it's, you know, you're using the electric and it's a $25 fee to just use the electric and all these things, but they're totally happy to give you free bulbs, which are LEDs. Which the question is, why? They never gave us incandescent bulbs. They never gave us candles. They never gave us actually if you wanted to save energy, you could have gave us all candles, right? They could have gave us candles at that time and we would have saved tons of energy. We actually would have saved the climate if we had candles because, right, we wouldn't be using any electricity. So it only makes sense, but we, they don't give you candles, but they'll give you LED bulbs. It's kind of like, you know, someone finding out that cigarettes are addicting and them giving you cigarettes all the time, getting you hooked, right? That's kind of how I see it. Thank you for the valuable information. I was wondering about those red and blue teeth whiteners and what do you think probably not good to insert the mouth? Yes, yeah, so that kind of goes into the the spectrums going into the gums. Now, you know, you could see maybe a change of your teeth in a short-term period because that's kind of how these things work in like a duration thing. It's always short-term, but it's the long-term health that might impact your gums and maybe, you know, make things worse. And it's interesting because same thing with tanning beds, right? That's why they have that 20-minute timeline, uh, time time limit on there, 10-minute timeliner, 10-minute uh, time frame situation on those as well too because once being exposed after usually 10 to 20 minutes then the body can actually have detrimental effects so it's interesting because same thing different color spectrums can be very helpful can help boost the body get the body going
but also you're being exposed to plastic that is emitting gases, which can be also toxic as well. So same thing with those things. I would just be careful with all that. You can just use coconut oil and do coconut oil pulling. That would be the ultimate way, in my opinion, for that. Or pearl powder. You can use the pearl powder and brush your teeth with pearl powder because it's the same thing as well, too. Is there a difference between infrared and LED? So it's just different light spectrums. LED is a digital light, so it's creating a color. And then infrared is on the infrared reddish spectrum. So you just have a different spectrum. So basically what people are, are, are light deficient in is just certain spectrums. That's pretty much what it is, right? If you're always in a cloudy environment, you're never getting those full different colors and hues. Because for example, when the sun goes up, it's red, orange, then it goes high and it goes blue, yellow, green, and then it hits purple, and then it kind of goes back down and does the exact same thing. So people are mostly light deficient. That's pretty much what it is. So you can buy a bulb that will give you, let's say, a certain color light, but the problem is you're not getting the full spectrum of what is actually needed, and that's why sunlight is best overall. Even if it's one day, right? Even if it's one day for one hour, that's way better than just sitting even in anything that's fake. That's what I've realized. What light should we use at home, incandescence? Yes, living with the land in Epcot. That's the one. And yes, NASA and Disney. Oh my, they sell red light beauty treatments. Yes, and that's the thing. You see all these industries, they're all connected, right? They're all selling the same type of treatments. They're all selling the same type of things. And they're all creating the science together. And it's funny because they all create the science too to say that UV is very bad for you. And you, excuse me, UV is very toxic, right? It's funny because, but they don't study light spectrum, right? They don't actually spend a dollar to study light spectrum. It's never, if they don't, they don't spend any of that, but they already tell you it's bad. So they're making an assumption or, you know, creating some sort of assumption before even studying it. So that's how you know how biased the information is that comes out based on light and frequencies. And that's why even if you look back in time, you had the violet ray machine. You also had uh, Tesla's purple, I think it was like te Tesla's purple color packets or something. These were all spectrum of, of plasma and UV and infrared and all these different light spectrums that we no longer get. That's why they were so healing. Right? They are being exposed to certain types of frequencies which were very healing for the eyes and very healing for the body, the heart, and the mind. Happy line. My body is craving so much dark chocolate all of a sudden. That's magnesium. So you're suffering from, you need magnesium. You should try pearl powder. Pearl powder can work real well with that. Or shilajot tablets as well. Both are high in magnesium. That's what happens. The body starts to crave those things because the body needs serotonin or dopamine or it's all imbalanced as well too. So the body starts to crave those things and then that's why you want to eat a lot of chocolate because of a ton of magnesium and chocolate. Wait, sorry why red therapy for a couple hours is doing more harm. Basically the frequencies of what's happening is you're being exposed to different types of frequencies and they're being created with digital lights such as fake lights that don't give you the frequency that you're trying to get. So you're better off being out in the sunlight and you save a lot of money as well too. Hi, nice to meet you. Have you heard anything about picking up on EMF frequencies like a low bass sound? Have you heard anyone hearing and picking up? Oh, picking up on EMF frequencies. Yes, so what happens is when you're exposed to too much EMF or too much um, you know, internet, I guess you could say, you'll start to pick up and hear sounds, right? Because you'll start to, you have crystals in your ear that pick up on, on spectrums and frequencies. And what happens is, is when you're around too much of it, you'll start to hear either a low sound, kind of like a ooh, or you'll hear a very high sound, right? Because the crystals are basically static, statically charged. So what happens is, is you want to go out into nature and barefoot ground or hug a tree or go walk on the beach, whichever one it may be, so that your body can take all that static off the body. Because remember, your body is one large crystal. That's the easiest way to say it. You are one beautiful crystalline structure with water inside of it and all types of crystals to pick up on every single thing that's outside and everything that's inside. And what's happening right now is your body is picking up on all the frequencies. So those would be the things I would say barefoot grounding, going and hugging a tree, walking out in nature, connecting and getting the devices off of you. And then also too, you want to work on heavy metal detox, such as Shilajot or Six Mix as well. So you can pull those heavy metals out of the body so that the body doesn't pick them up like an antenna as well too. Hope that can help. 
Tinted windows are bad. Yes, yeah, tinted windows are altering the light that comes into the body. Dun, dun, dun. Let me see if there's any more in here. But yeah, today I just wanted to hit on so much about light because it's just wild. What do you think about the Tesla making homes just like the cars? Is there an agenda behind it? Honestly, anything that Elon Musk is putting his money into is to just pretty much control and manipulate the public. And also any type of technology that he's trying to promote is pretty much something that's going to have some sort of surveillance or the Internet of Things or connect up to a satellite or something because that's pretty much what it is. I mean, the Tesla cars themselves emit a ton of EMF. You're basically in an electric vehicle that's cooking your cells the entire time while you drive it. You're also around a lot of digital light and digital devices, which are also impacting your health. And they also start on fire all the time. You can go on to Google and just look up Tesla starting on fire. They're, they're, every week there's a new car starting on fire and whatever else. So that's kind of a big red flag in my opinion. Then now if he creates a house, I would not live in that house. I'd rather go live out in the middle of the mountain and go put a couple like sticks over there and just kind of live in the middle of the mountain than anything like that. Because what happens is, is that house will be set up with all types of smart technology. You have smart fridges, smart dishwashers, smart lights, smart whatever. All of those things will be set up on timers and they will also be connected up to the cloud with devices so that they can control and manipulate your life using climate change as the factor that you've been using too much water, you've been using too much food, you've been you know, having your lights on for too long, uh, you, you've been in the bedroom for too long so now we have to turn off your bedroom lights, you've used too much heat because it's too hot outside even though you know it's always too hot and too cold and whatever. So we've actually had to change your thermostat and put a smart thermostat in there which can also do that. So as far as that, um, yeah, I would say they're definitely an agenda when I look through it because that's the thing. When you have all these smart things and everything all syncs up to Wi-Fi and all becomes to connect to the cloud, then a lot of manipulation can occur, such as, I don't know if you guys remember with the electric companies in Denver, they were turning off people's electric during the time in which there was a heat wave because they were saying that it was dangerous for them to have basically air conditioning on at that time, and a bunch of people passed away because they had the air conditioning on because it was 110 degrees because they were elderly. So that's the problem with anything that's created with Elon Musk, Tesla, and anything smart. And if he creates a phone, wouldn't buy it either. You know, And that's the thing, these phones, they, they take a lot of data too as well, right? There's a lot of settings you can turn off in your phone, but a lot of these phones are taking a ton of data. You have Siri, you have Alexa, you have all of these things which are taking data as well. Those can also be used to manipulate against people and then pretty much, in my opinion, create a social credit score where they can then say, well, you know, you've just been a bad citizen because you've been cooking at home too much and then they turn off your grill and whatever else. That's kind of how my whole mind thinks of all of that because that's what we've seen. There's been examples where we've seen things like that where that's the part of it's not about saving humanity, it's controlling humanity rather than giving them something as helpful or an option of something for them to thrive, right? If we really wanted to help society, if we really wanted to bring society to its up, upwards, you know, most highest potential, we would be not suppressing free energy, right? We would be allowing technologies that are very helpful. We would be teaching people how to grow food. We'd be teaching people all about different things with creativity, inventing, and and just really pushing their mind to the highest level so that we could have this beautiful utopia society. But in my opinion, anything with the Tesla or Elon Musk, he's trying to create a dystopian society so that he can be the king, right? He also bought a social media platform so he could be the king of the social media platform so he can get the data for to connect the data to the neural link. When people go to put a neural link in, they can just connect into Twitter and then they can just, they can just do their social status updates right with Twitter. That's pretty much what the whole point is because think of the amount of data you have when you buy a social media platform, a ton. So my whole thing, it's just, yeah, definitely don't agree with anything with Tesla, Elon Musk, or anybody about that. So sorry if I already missed that. Infrared sauna. Infrared sauna, as long as it's with an incandescent bulbs, that would be very healing. If it's with LED bulbs, then you want to pass on that one. Oh my God, I have no idea about the LED have mercury. My husband installed all of those around the house. Yes, yeah, so just look up the LED lawsuit. If you ever have an LED break and you had to, to, add to go into a lawsuit, 
on the LED company, such as General Electric or any of them, just look up the, the guidelines of about what the lawsuit entails and the steps that you have to go through if you want to basically commit that, or, or not to commit, but go through with that lawsuit. And they talk about that the person must be wearing a mercury mask. And it's interesting because if they don't have mercury, why do they have to wear a mercury mask? It's interesting. Definitely something interesting to think about. And I think that's it. All these new headlights on the cars and trucks and motorcycles. Yeah, so blinding. And that's, that's why I stopped going out at driving at, at nighttime, right? Because nighttime will just mess you up. These lights, you're like blinded. And you can wear, you know, different spectrum blue blockers and whatever. But even still, you know, it's just, it's very hard on your eyes. And also too, not supposed to be out at nighttime too as well. We're supposed to be relaxing, supposed to be reading you know, letting our body rest because when we go out at night, it definitely messes up our circadian rhythm and our ability for us to sleep. What do you recommend for fever? My girl is eight and sick. So if she's having a fever, she's supposed to have a fever. And if anything, she can have some ginger, uh, lemon peel tea, and a lot of sea salt, right? She needs hydration. Her body's going through a purging phase where she's trying to balance everything out and trying to detox that. And her body's heating up because she's trying to basically, um, get it out, right? She's trying to balance everything out. The body heats up all the water in its, in, its, in its natural form so that the body can start to balance itself out. So actually just support her, her, her situation, wrap her up so she's nice and warm and keep her nice and you know cozy and loved. And then also give her a lot of sea salt and a lot of ginger tea and a lot of lemon peel tea. All you gotta do is peel the lemon off, get an organic lemon, cut little slices, put that in the water and, and simmer that for about 15 minutes and have her drink that all throughout the day. And that hydration and all of that will help support her body so it can get back into balance. I have those random purple street lights. Yep, those are the same exact ones. Let me see. Do, do, do. The name of the book that I had, and I will just hit on that and I think it'll be the end, but Dr. John Ott, Health and Light. And this book is 1970. I always try to find old ones. 1973, right? And it's funny because 1976, you had the car that ran on water, but that car was never put out into the public because that technology was suppressed. So if we wanted to help society, we would have released that car instead of electric vehicles that also only have a short range as well too. Let me see. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you, thank you. I used to love tanning beds. Listen, I used to work at a tanning bed place and that's just the last story of mine. I used to work at a tanning bed place when I was 20 years old. I used to go tanning all the time, you know, I didn't know. I just worked there, I was a young kid, but all of those lotions and all of those things contain so many chemicals, it's not even funny. And the one that I only used to use that we used to sell at the tanning salon that I used to work at was made of hemp. And it was always the best one and I used to tell everybody, listen, if you're gonna use anything, use this one, it's got hemp in it and whatever. But all the rest of them, like they, they had people and celebrities pushing all these things that you could have all these toxic fragrances all over your skin and cook them right in for 20 minutes, you know, but it was a thing. But also too, it did make you feel better. I will not deny it going because for example, in Chicago, where you were never exposed to sunlight, it was at least something. But now if I kind of look at it, I look at it very differently of everything else. Have you heard of the Therosage Infrared Sauna? I don't think I haven't, or I don't think I have. It sounds Therosage, I don't think so. You'd have to send it to me and I can look it up or send me a link on it. Is there a way to protect yourself from LEDs besides being not around it if my work installs these new LEDs? It sounds like they already installed them, that's why you're smiling. But um, with that, you can get yourself some different types of spectrum glasses that can help you know, shield or polarized UV glasses, something like that to help shield the lighting. That's kind of about it because you know there's not a lot. The old fashioned blue blockers that they use when people had cataracts, you can get a pair of those, but something, something you should have because the problem is, is you're being exposed to that light for you know let's say eight hours and that light can be altering your brain waves and then also harming your health. Right? A lot of people get real lethargic and tired when they're exposed to it. So anything to kind of just block it as much as you can, you know, can actually be very helpful. I think that's it. 20 days on the Shilajad tablet. Happy to hear Nicole and honestly our Shilajad tablets have been selling nonstop and I'm thankful for everybody who's been loving them and they've just been flying off the shelves, right? I mean, you just feel better, your energy's boosted, your brain is on point. And that's the thing. It's just bringing minerals back into the body so the body can heal and go back to its original state that it used to be in 
before it lost all its nutrients and started to kind of fall apart. Let me see. I think that's it. Let me see. Been taking Jeff. Been taking the Dragon's Blood Pearl Powder and Chilla Shot Tablet. I can highly recommend it to everybody. Thankful, Jeff. Thankful for your support and always supporting our brand through all the censorship and all the nonsense that we face here on social media in 2022, soon to be 2023. So thankful for that. And those, that's a great combination. Dragon's Blood, great. Cleaning out the blood. Pearl Powder, great. Turning on the brain. Balancing GABA levels. And Chilla Shot, just... 84 out of 102 minerals. And that's why I'm working on another one that's going to work with Shilajat as well, too, which is going to be the rarest Shilajat in the world. So I'm excited for that. And that's, I think, it. Talking light about it, Mama Bear. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see. Da, da, da. I bought a hydroponic. I'll hit on this one last, and then that will be the last one. I bought a hydroponic grow system, and it was just okay. There's definitely no substitute for soil and sunlight. I don't recommend it, only if you have absolutely no other alternatives to grow things. Exactly. Every person has sun, or at least some sun in the summer too as well. And yes, we cannot substitute water for soil, and we cannot substitute sunlight for anything. That's pretty much what it is, you know, and that's why Monsanto is pushing a lot of this and trying to push all this nonsense of we'll grow indoors so that we can save the world and we can use their genetically modified seeds, which have been altered so that they can be the patent holders and control the food system. You know, it just, it just doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And nature will keep thriving no matter what, right? No matter what, nature always wins. That's pretty much how it goes. And all these fake things... They just don't work. And it's funny because, speaking of hydroponic systems as well, there was a, a buddy, not a buddy, uh, somebody I saw, they were growing indoors and all of their plants stopped growing. So they had to take them outside and put them in the sunlight, which is com the complete opposite of the whole point of growing indoors. And when they started taking them outside, all the plants got back to normal and they all healed and all the illness of the plant went away. That's how magical the outside is, and the inside is not natural. It's like me trying to take this tree right now and try to try to bring it into my home and put it in my bedroom. It's not gonna it's not gonna grow, right? It's not gonna do the same as if it's out of nature. So we have to mimic nature and be with nature. Otherwise, nature will destroy us. That's pretty much how it goes. And that's all for today. I'm happy everybody attended. If you guys have any questions about any of our products, just send me a message. I will be putting this up on YouTube. I will also put this up on Rumble. And then if you guys aren't following us, come on to Telegram. We're always having so much fun on Telegram. We have a huge group in there. And everybody is always chatting and communicating. And we have people from Australia. We got people from Europe. I got people from Africa, Asia, Russia, United States, South America. All just coming together to communicate and chat like we should be doing. Because that's what social media can be a beautiful blessing for. And for example, if you want to come, just go to Telegram, Cultivate Elevate, come join our group, and you can come in there and chat, ask any questions, talk to everybody, because that's what we're all about, building a community to help support one another and uplift each other to bring change and positivity so we do not keep repeating the same nonsense that over and over and over and over again, because I can't take it anymore. It's just the same, you know, we just, same goofy things, same loops, no more of that. We need to make change, move forward so that we can evolve, in my opinion, to the best that we can possibly be and have the best health that we can ever have because health is wealth and that's the most important. So I wish you guys all a great rest of the night. And if you guys have any questions about the book, send me a message, I'll send you the link on the book. And then I will also put this up, like I said, online and then I'll put the links as well on there too. But I wish you guys all a great night and I will see you next Monday. And I think that's it. That's all. So I wish you guys a great one.